Hello, readers. Our next book of the day is titled Pink is for Blobfish, written by Jess Keating, author you should recognize because we've used her as an author of the week. So her book is titled The World of Weird Animals. Pink is for Blobfish, discovering the world's perfectly pink animals. Think you know pink? Think again. Pink is for blobfish. Bizarre blobfish are made of gelatinous goo, which is less dense than water. This allows them to lazily drift through the ocean, like bloated pink balloons. Blobfish don't hunt for food. Instead, when something edible floats by, they simply open their mouths and gulp it down. Pretty in pink. The blobfish was recently voted the ugliest animal in the world in a poll taken by the Ugly Animal Preservation Society. Luckily, blobfish don't use mirrors, so they aren't bothered by their, by their less than cute faces. As if this wasn't bad enough, another name for the blobfish is Fat Head Sculpin. These fish can't catch a break. Name, blobfish. Species name. Size, up to 12 inches, 30 centimeters from nose to tail. Diet, almost anything edible that floats by, including snails, worms, crustaceans, and other slow-moving animals. Habitat, the deep water surrounding Australia and New Zealand where few animals can survive. Predators and threats. Blobfish have no known predators in and are inedible to humans, yet many scientists believe they may face extinction soon as they are often caught in fishermen's nets by accident. Pink is for blobfish. Pink is for pink toe tarantulas. It is very easy to spot mysterious antils, pink toe tarantulas in pet stores but much harder to find them in the wild. At night, they scurry out of their funnel webs high in the trees to search for food. Hairy business. Have you ever thought of using your hair as a weapon? Well, these spiders get nervous. They can rub off, eradicating hairs from their abdomen. These hairs get into the eyes and skin of a predator which is extremely painful and a huge bummer for any creature looking for an easy meal. Despite their beautiful pink coloration as adults, Antil's pink toe spiderlings are bright blue when they hatch. Huh. Name. Antilles Antilles. Antilles pink toe tarantula. I'm going to look that one up. My apologies. Species name. Whoop, whoop. Size, 4 to 6 inches or 10.2 to 15.2 centimeters. Diet, insects, worms, and small lizards. Habitat, the rain forest of Martinique and Guadalupe off the northern coast of South Africa. Predators and threats. These creatures need trees to survive and build their webs. So deforestation may eventually pose a threat to them. And notice readers that there are a lot of big words, some that are very hard to pronounce. So with your teacher, of course, if I mispronounce then let's study those words and go back and give them a try. So there are a few words on this page. One, 
and two, and definitely the species names. So as a class, let's use other tools to help confirm the full pronunciation of these kind of sounding out guesses that I'm making. So we we'll do a little bit of word work together. Pink is for orchid manatuses. When flattened, petal-like arms that stand out against green leaves, orchid manatuses look like harmless, beautiful flowers. But these predators have strong arms and big appetites, patiently waiting to snatch up any insect that comes too close. Made you look. Sometimes nature can be tricky. Scientists wanted to know if the insects that landed on orchid, orchid manatuses were really fooled into thinking they were flowers. They came up with an experiment where they gave insects a choice. They could land on an orchid mantis or on a real Malaysian flower. And voila, it turned out that the insects picked manatuses more often than actual flowers. Orchid mantis, species name, size 0.5 to 6 inches or 1.3 to 15.2 centimeters. Diet, insects like crickets and flies as well as some small lizards. Habitat, the rainforests of Indonesia and Malaysia. Predators and threats. Orchid manatuses live in areas with many white and pink flowers. The same coloration that lures prey to them also works as camouflage against would-be predators such as birds, toads, rodents, bats, and lizards. Like other rainforest creatures, their gravest threat stems from habitat loss due to human development. Now remember, if there are any questioning words that you're like, hmm, work together as a class to correct any questioning words. Pink is for pygmy, seahorses. Pygmy seahorses hide out in plain sight, nestled amongst the pink coral of the ocean floor. They are extremely fragile, so it's important for scuba divers to be careful around them. Even the bright flash of a camera can disturb them. Number one dad! In most animal species, it is usually the female who becomes pregnant and gives birth. But seahorses don't care about tradition. Instead, male seahorses become pregnant and carry the eggs in a pouch on their bellies until they hatch. If that isn't enough to earn them the Dad of the Year award, they also keep the eggs clean, clean and protect them from predators. Number one, Dad. Name. The Barbagant's Pygmy Seahorse. Species name? Size up to 1.1 inches or 27 millimeters. Diet, tiny crustaceans such as brine shrimp. Habitat, the waters of surrounding Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, the Philippines, Malaysia, Japan, and Northern Australia. Predators and threats. Many of the world's seahorse population populations are decreasing. Oh my goodness, many of the world's sea horse populations are decreasing. In some countries, seahorses are believed to have medicinal properties. Because of this, millions of them are caught every year. Seahorses are also threatened by loss of habitat as their favorite sea grasses, reefs, and mangroves are declining worldwide. The last one I'm going to read about today is pink is for the rosette spoonbills. Not all pink animals are born pink. When baby spoonbills 
hatch. They are chubby and covered in downy white feathers. As they grow up, their feathers turn various shades of pink because of pigments in the shrimp they eat. What a feather in your cap. Or sorry, what a feather in your cap? In the past, women used to wear hats decorated with vibrant spoonbill feathers. Fans made of spoonbill wings were also very popular. Because of aggressive plume hunters, the rosette spoonbill was once nearly extinct. By 1940, there were only about 30 breeding pairs left in a Florida flock that previously contained thousands. Today, thanks to conservation efforts, their numbers have rebounded. Yay! Name, the rosette spoonbill. Species name, Size, roughly 28 to 34 inches tall, or 71.1 to 86.4 centimeters, with a wingspan of 4 feet 4 inches or 1.3 meters. Diet, aquatic invertebrates, aquatic, fish, amphibians, and plants. Habitat, marshes, ponds, swamps, mangroves, and rivers are spoonbill breeding grounds. They are found along the Gulf Coast of the United States and in South America, Central America, and the West Indies. Predators and threats. Entire colonies have been known to leave their homes because of coastal development and pollution. And some flocks now live in wildlife, now live in wildlife refuges where conservationists monitor their number. Numbers. Raccoons, coyotes, and hawks often prey on spoonbill eggs and young. Again, any questioning words, please work them out together. Okay, so I'm going to show you in some brief um, that you can grab a book in your classroom and read the rest about, you could read, read about pink is for Amazon River dolphins, pink fairy armadillos, southern blind snakes, almost looks like a worm, doesn't it? Pink is for Hopkins rose nude branches, pink is for naked mole rats. Pink is for pink sea stars. Pink is for the hippopotamuses. Pink is for pink slugs. Pink is for pink land iguanas. Pink is for dragon millipedes. Pink is for red eucharis. Definitely going to have to look up the sounding on that one. I don't see a sound out bar on that one. That would have been very helpful to me. So we'll have to look that one up together. Pink is for hairy squat lobsters. I find those to be very fascinating. And what I love at the end of the book is the author. She includes pink is everywhere. There's a whole world of colorful creatures out there. And scientists have discovered only a fraction of them. Maybe the next big discovery will be yours. And if you follow these different colors, it shows you where they're located. So right where you find this color of pink, you'll see that's where the blobfish live. Or if you find the orchid mantis. And there's different Amazon River dolphin. I just love this math this map. I think it's super cool for her to include. And then on the back, it says a glossary of useful words. So when we read books like this, and you know that I'm going to work out some of the pronunciations. So as I go back and work on those words together with you, we can also work on the meanings of some of those big new words that were in the story 
or in the book. Want to know more? She gives us websites we could go to. There's a name of a magazine and a couple other books. That's super awesome. And it says, when I grow up, the world is full of animals for you to discover. And there are many different types of scientists who study them. What creatures amaze you the most? I want to learn about insects. So you can be an an entomologist. I want to learn about marine animals. So you could be a marine biologist. You want to learn about reptiles? You can be a herptologist. I want to learn about birds. So an ornithologist, mammals, mammalogist, all sorts of animals, a zoologist. So another great thing is we can find out more about these words and go do our own research and find out more about these big words. And I love that the authors in these books give us some other places, books, resources that we can go and continue to be learners. So happy reading. Thank you, Just Kidding. And she has several other stories as well that go that she has written after Pink is for Blobfish that you can enjoy. Happy reading.